బిస్కట్ వేది కావట దెన్ ఫ్యామిలీ సీక్ర్ గా మిరాసి మంచి పొటెటో క్రక బిస్కట్ వేది కావట దెన్ ఫ్యామిలీ సీక్ర్ గా మిరాసి మంచి పొటెటో క్రక tonight first at 9 trade union action employees of the petroleum corporation to go on strike from midnight today long queues seen at petrol stations in colombo first at 9 this is other there and now 24/7 also making headlines tonight bond issue information revealed at the bond commission that a prominent minister has received a luxury apartment from arjuna losius Jaffna shooting lawyers demands that judges be given proper security in the wake of the incident in Jaffna on Saturday economy update the central bank says that Sri Lanka's average inflation reaches an 18 month high and in international headlines Maldives in crisis Maldives parliament shuts down to stop removal of speaker under the directive of the president Live across Sri Lanka this is other than a 24/7 good evening everyone I'm Mahesh Jani we begin our broadcast tonight with news that will certainly affect you six trade union uh, unions attached to the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation have announced an indefinite strike commencing at midnight today we signed on building a new oil refinery with chinese assistance in the southern port of hambantota and immediately being repaired in the existing refinery near colombo He said that they are commencing an indefinite strike as the government has failed to address their issues following their previous strike in April. What do you think about the strike of work? Well, it's uh something new. I'm not used to it, but uh I mean it's I hope I get some gasoline so now it will be around uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. Origin anything apne kar dara I think. This strike is an inconvenience. There are long lines. <laughs> All I have to say is we are severely inconvenienced because of this. The Government Medical Officers Association says it will launch its planned token strike tomorrow from 8 a.m. onwards. Convening a media briefing, GMOA officials assured that cancer hospital, children's hospitals, maternity hospitals, emergency units, dengue treatment units and kidney treatment units will remain in operation. The Government Medical Officers Association is launching the strike protesting the attempted arrest of Medical Faculty Students Action Committee convener Ryan Jailath as well as the continued remand custody of student leaders without the proper formulation of charges. And we are also requesting the government to appoint a president to the Sri Lanka Medical Council who is an eminent person an independent person who is acceptable to all who will conduct himself in the best traditions of the profession for the benefit of the people and the patient of this country and we want the government to bring about a declare a, a proper timeline to gazette the minimum standards of medical education and we also want the government to stop recruiting student to saitam institute as well as to stop awarding degrees from that institute mere verbal assurances are not sufficient there should be legal documentary evidence and legal documentary proclamation to this effect and we believe that this whole saitam crisis can be solved only by bringing that institution under government control and government regulation The Colombo Crimes Division has informed the Colombo Magistrates Court that the attempted arrest of the convener of the Medical Faculty Students Action Committee Ryan Jala failed due to the intervention of trade union leaders. The CCD also stated that a white van which belonged to the police was used in the arrest attempt. Furthermore, the division stated that video footage is required to identify those who protested at the Lipton roundabout yesterday. The court ordered six television channels to provide unedited video footage of the protest meanwhile several protests were launched today in objection to the attempt to arrest jalat police used water cannons to disperse protesters engaged in a satyagraha at the lipton roundabout yesterday protesters had ignored a ruling by the colombo chief magistrates court ordering them to conclude their hunger strike the medical students of the university of peradeniya launched a protest march in mehintale town last evening 
students of the University of Sri Jawadnapura and students of the Karapitiya Medical Faculty of the University of Ruhana also launched protests last evening. Students of the Sabaragamua and Eastern Universities and members of the Government Medical Officers Association at General Hospital Polonnaruwa also organized protests today. <laughs> Meanwhile, university students started a Satyagraha today at the Lipton Roundabout to protest against Saitam. Several political parties and trade unions participated in this protest. We are asking the president and the officials of the government that if it is possible to shut down avant-garde, why is it impossible to close down Saitam? The issue was discussed at several media briefings today. How can you say the public was inconvenienced by the hunger strike? How did they implement law for such a thing? There were existing warrants against Ryan. It is clear that this vehicle belonged to the police. If it was necessary to abduct him, it could have been done late at night. If they arrest them legally, they should be responsible for it. No one knows where they were carried and who carried them if they were abducted. Therefore, no one is responsible for the life of the student. What are the responses of the police and the government to this? The police assaults unarmed students, the police assaults unarmed students, and they were also unable to maintain law and order in the north. I have granted Saitam the power to award degrees as a private medical university. They should register as doctors and that is all. Former director of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, Arjun Alosius, was ordered by the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into bond issuance to hand over mobile phones and laptops he used from 2015 onwards. It was also revealed today that Alosius bore the rental cost of a luxury home occupied by a prominent minister and his family for six months. Appearing on behalf of Arjun Aloysius, attorney at law Kalinga Indatisa said that last Friday the Presidential Commission issued a written order to hand over all communication devices used by his client since 2015. Deputy Solicitor General Yasanta Koda Gode informed the Commission that the devices will be handed over to the CID to carry out further investigations into the controversial bond issuance. Arjuna Loishas arrived at the Bond Commission premises at 1.30 this afternoon and handed the requested devices over to the CID along with an affidavit. Meanwhile, it was revealed that Aloysius rented a luxury house to be used by a minister and his family for six months. A businesswoman who assisted in the transaction appeared as a witness and testified before the commission. According to the witness, the said minister's wife inspected the residence. She added that later, Arjun Aloysius also came to inspect the residence and told her that the house was for his own use. The witness, a childhood acquaintance of Arjun Aloysius, testified that she charged 1.2 million rupees per month for a period of six months and was given a total of 7.2 million rupees as a rental fee. Due to the media attention shortly after, the minister's family took the house. However, the witness said that she received a call from Arjun Aloysius requesting that she destroy relevant documents and the agreement pertaining to the rent and that he destroyed his copies. The witness said that she did not comply with the request and told the commission that she kept the documents safe. She also told the commission that after a period of six months, a company purchased the luxury house for 165 million rupees. She also revealed that said minister's wife and daughters are directors of that company. Lawyers in the northern and eastern provinces refrain from providing their services today in protest of the shooting that took place in Nalur, which claimed the life of one police officer and wounded another. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Bar Association urges the government to consider the enhancement of the security of judges so that the functions of the judiciary can be carried out without any fear or favour. Lawyers of five districts in the north and east were involved in the protest which disrupted court proceedings in the districts. Lawyers were seen engaging in a silent protest in front of the Waunia Magistrates' Courts complex. 
We vehemently condemn this since it's a threat to the independence of the judiciary. Such situations arose in the country earlier as well. If such things continue to happen, we as lawyers will have to take strong action. Lawyers in Batikalo engaged in a similar silent protest while lawyers of the Kilinoche magistrates and district courts also protested. The employees of the Jaffna District Secretariat also staged a silent protest in front of their office today while members of the women's organization in the area expressed their condemnation of the shooting. Meanwhile, private buses and three-wheelers in Jaffna refrained from providing transport services today and private bus workers in the Waunia and Kilinocha districts also protested the incident. Many small businesses in the area were also closed. Special security was provided to the Jaffna Courts complex. Meanwhile, the remains of Sergeant Sarath Premachandra, who died in the shooting, were brought to his residence at Kumarakattuva in Chilau last night. Opinions regarding the statement made by the police spokesperson on the shooting incident were expressed at several media briefings today. I have a problem with the statement made by the police spokesperson. He said that the shooting was not aimed at the judge and was not premeditated. In that case, what has happened was that a person walking on the street has randomly pulled out a gun. If that is the case, then it's more serious. People related to the underworld and people driven by political intent can do this, but not the public. It proves that law and peace in the north has broken down. It's a serious condition. I request the police spokesperson to be more responsible for his words. The police spokesperson said that this was not a pre-planned attack. We don't know how he came to this conclusion so quickly. The people related to the case have fled the country, so the statement he made on the planning of the incident will be inquired into. Also speaking on the incident, President of the Bar Association, Attorney at Law U R D Silva said, the authorities should pay greater attention to ensure the security of their profession. The police should immediately investigate this matter and should provide an answer to the public. We as the Bar Association expect the authorities to provide proper security to judges in order to continue court proceedings. Also in other local stories, in an open letter to Mahanayaka Theros and the Mahasangha today, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa says that the Office of Missing Persons Bill passed recently will allow new institutions and laws to give foreign powers a central role in prosecuting Sri Lanka's armed forces. The former president further added that the enthusiasm of the good governance political parties to pass laws designed to punish members of the armed forces and political authorities that gave leadership to the war is evident. In the letter, former President Mahinda Rajapaksa drew attention to several provisions of Office of Missing Persons Act No. 14 of 2016, which were amended by the Office of Missing Persons Act No. 9 of 2017. Former President Rajapaksa noted that since the body can receive funds from any source, local or foreign, the office can receive funding from foreign governments, international NGOs and even pro-LTTE diaspora organisations that have not been banned. Furthermore, he highlighted that under Section 12E of the Act, all government bodies, including the armed forces and intelligence services, have to submit all required information and documents to the OMP, even in contravention of the Official Secrets Act and provisions of the Right to Information Act will also not apply to the office. Finally, Rajapaksa stated that nothing that the OMP does can be called into question by any court of law except the Supreme Court under Articles 126 and 140 of the Constitution. However, as the OMP can withhold information under Section 15 of the Act, there will be no practical use in moving even to the Supreme Court against the OMP. The former president added that it can be observed that the various laws being introduced by the government complement one another and alleged that the justifications of the ministers of the UNP and SLFP for the proposed law saying that it will apply only to the future and not to the past is an outright lie. Meanwhile, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa expressed the following views on the Office of the Missing Persons Act in Virakatiya today. 
The Office of the Missing Persons was established to fulfill political needs and act as a tribunal. This is dangerous. The President delayed the passing of the bill for one year, but as he was influenced, he signed the bill. I believe that the President should reconsider his actions. Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government Faisal Mustafa says the government has not attempted to postpone elections. The minister made this statement participating in the annual convention of the Sri Lanka Young Men's Muslims Association in Colombo yesterday. Chairman of the Elections Commission Mahinda Deshapriya was also present at the event. I can tell you with responsibility, even though there is a perception that the government and that I as the Minister of Local Government has attempted to postpone elections, we have never done so. The Commissioner is fully aware of the fact that the delimitation process of this country was done during the local government elections. The committee appointed, there was a minister, but there was a hidden hand who wanted to do things according to his will. That resulted in the government taking a decision to appoint an appellate committee. I'm saddened to note that the chairman of the election commission feels that there is an attempt to further delay the election. Postponing an election is harmful to the democracy of any country. No one is trying to postpone elections. Many think that myself and Minister Mustafa are responsible for postponing elections. It's wrong. If they clear the shortcomings of the act, we can hold an election. Also in local news, a tense situation occurred today when a team of special task force officers engaged in a raid of illegal sand mines at a lagoon in Karadianaru, Batiklo. One suspect who tried to flee the scene by swimming across the lagoon drowned. Police have been investigating illegal sand mining in Karadianaru and the area was raided today. Two suspects jumped into the lagoon to try and escape when the police fired into the air. A 19-year-old youth drowned, but the other was rescued. Residents of the area who gathered at the scene, having been informed of the youth's death, assaulted a special task force officer. The officer was admitted to the Batikolo Hospital. Meanwhile, area residents organized a protest at the Chenkaladi Junction, which, according to our reporter, many of those who engage in sand mining joined. Welcome back everyone. On to international news, the Maldivian military locked down parliament today allegedly on the orders of the country's president Abdullah Yameen in a bid to prevent opposition lawmakers from taking part in a vote to impeach parliamentary speaker Abdullah Mashi Mohammed. The opposition accuses Mashi of ignoring allegations of corruption, mismanagement and rights abuses. <laughs> Soldiers and police in the Maldives clashed with opposition lawmakers using tear gas and pepper spray to prevent them from entering parliament premises. The opposition secured enough support from government defectors to begin impeachment proceedings against Speaker Abdullah Masi Mohammed and ally of President Abdullah Yameen earlier this month. The opposition is trying to unseat the Speaker for blocking requests to summon government officials accused of corruption. <laughs> Well, let's get reaction to that story and other stories as well. Joining me now live from our newsroom is Anuradha Hera, other Dharana's Chief International Affairs Analyst. Anuradha, once again, welcome to our news uh, bulletin uh, tonight. Let's talk about what's happening in Maldives. This was quite a shock uh, in terms of uh, what was going down in Maldives uh, closer to Sri Lanka. Now, um, to ask you the question... Uh, the volatility in Maldives politically continues to rise uh, from time to time. We've seen the incidents that occurred with regard to the removal of former President Mohammed Nasheed and then the removal of Prime Minister on charges of treason. Now, a pattern seems to be emerging on this. Any challenging uh, the incumbent president, Abdullah Yamin, seems to not to have a future in Maldivian politics. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. But if you, after you've cited all those examples, um, I would argue that, you know, while the gravity of this particular situation may have been a little bit shocking, um, you know, there has been lots of indications that things are not quite right 
uh, in the Maldives politically. People um, have issues pertaining to corruption and uh, you know um, disintegration of democracy and things like that. So um, as you suggest, you know there seems to be this tussle between the leadership, the people, the parliamentarians. So it's not too much of a, a shock to see the, how this has escalated um, into this problem. And it's you know difficult to say now mm. what decision the president will take uh, from having just shut down parliament this way. Indeed. Uh, now, the question remains, uh, um, where could this lead to? How do you think the international community will react to this, especially India? Uh, well, the international community has already started reacting um, to this situation. Uh, the U.S. ambassador, the Canadian head here, and also uh, the U.K. embassies have all, all re also um, already uh, st issued statements um, saying that they're concerned about the um, democracy and the situation that's t taking place in the Maldives. But as you mentioned, even more so than the Western countries, um, the relationships and the reactions that India and China um, have to the situation, I think, are more important because Maldives is in a very similar situation like um, us here in Sri Lanka, where uh, relations with India and China are very crucial. Um, you know, both of those relationships are very crucial because, like Sri Lanka, uh, Maldives is also in a very strategic uh, location. So, how these events play out is going to be really important to those two countries, depending on who either stays in power or comes into power, um, is going to sort of, uh, you know, um, factor into how these relationships may change. Indeed, we will keep a close watch on events in Maldives and report to our viewers as and when we get uh, new stories. Also, since I have you quickly, I want to touch events unfolding in the U.S. with regard to President Trump and his connections with Russia. Uh, this is a never-ending story. The latest is that President's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, saying that he did not collude with the Russian. Even during the weekend, we saw some key people leaving the White House. So what kind of future President Trump seems to be looking at? Is this it? Is Trump and Russia going to be be, you know, connected every single time. So, as you mentioned, Jared Kushner did uh, issue a very long statement, and he is, I think, even as we speak, um, getting ready to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee. And as he says, he he did have contacts with some Russians, but that he did not collude with uh, any Russians if, uh, pertaining to the elections. But in terms of talking about the future of the Trump uh, administration, I think what's really important is the special investigation that's being carried out by former FBI Director Robert uh, Mueller. And the reason that it is so um, important is because it's a rare kind of an investigation. You don't see these happening mm -hmm. very often. And he has a lot of power, right? He can call uh, for mandate people to hand in evidence. If you don't, it's an illegal offense. He, can, he has the power to initiate criminal charges towards somebody and also has the power to reveal evidence, which mm -hmm. could be used in a potential impeachment hearing. So that's really the gravity of the situation. So I think when you're talking about the future of the Trump administration, it really balances on this particular uh, investigation. Well, um, uh, recently Trump did say that he can forgive himself uh, in terms of what we need to see what uh, would uh, turn out to be. Anurab the Herath of the Renaissance Chief International Affairs and Liz, thank you very much for joining us tonight. On to business news now. Sri Lanka's annual average inflation remained at a more than 18-month high of 6.1% in June, unchanged from a month ago. National Consumer Price Index, which measures nationwide inflation, is the most recent consumer price index of the statistics department that has been released monthly from October 2015. Data is available for the annual average percentage change since December 2015, where the index reported 3.8%. Annual average inflation, or a 12-month moving average, Average is the percentage difference between the average price index of last 12 months and the average price index of previous 12 months. And on to equities now. Colombo stocks were lower after close today as losses in the footwear and textile trading and services sectors led shares lower. At the close in Colombo, the CSE All share fell 0.08% to hit a new one-month low of 6,664. Turnover on the day was 502 million rupees, with foreigners remaining active as net buyers of 195 million rupees, with foreign activity accounting of for 52% of today's turnover. The uh, Sri Lankan rupee traded slightly firmer today with the spot rupee trading at 153 rupees and 50 cents to 55 cents per dollar from Friday's close of 153 rupees and 65 cents to 70 cents a dollar. Now here's a look at how the rupee traded against other currencies during the day today.
Welcome back. Former Sri Lankan captain Hasham Thilakaratna has joined the team as interim batting coach ahead of the Test Series against India. Thilakaratna led Sri Lanka in 11 tests and hit 11 test centuries in 83 matches. Thilakaratna also served as the national selector between January 2013 and April 2015. Also in sports, England won their fourth Women's World Cup last night inspired by Vice Captain Anya Shrubsole, who produced an astonishing spell of seam bowling to turn the game on its head. Having restricted England to 228, India were cruising and 191 for three, but Shrubsole claimed five wickets in her spell as India were bowled out for 219. Anya Shrubsole castled Smriti Mandana early on, but the opener's wicket was merely a taster of the fireworks to come. Mithali Raj looked ominous but departed to a run-out before Poonam Raut and Hamanpreet Kaur, match winner in the semi-final, started to dent English hopes. The pair put on 95 runs and while Kaur fell for 51, Veda Krishnamurti joined Raut as India looked more and more likely to claim a first Women's World Cup title. But Anya Shrubsole trapped Poonam Raut leg before for 86 and the host fought back. Shikha Pandey and Deepti Sharma brought the equation to 11 needed off 16 balls with three wickets in hand, but a quick throw from Shrubsole saw Pandey run out. Deepti Sharma was then caught at mid-on, and fittingly it was Shrubsole again who bowled Rajeshwari Gaekwad to claim her sixth wicket in the final and allow England to celebrate. A very good evening and welcome to the Weather Centre. Now, Sri Lanka can expect some wet weather from Wednesday over the southwestern region and in the eastern Uva and north central provinces. The western as well as the central and Sabargamu areas can expect some intermittent showers over the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, fairly strong winds of about 40 to 50 km per hour can be expected in the southern region. For temperatures in key cities, let's take a look at the city by city forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24-7. I'm Mahish Johnny. We will return first at 9 tomorrow with Indi Vriyamuatha. Be sure to join us then. And before we go, we like to leave you with some sights and sound from the Sembuatha Lake, a scenic tourist attraction situated in Al Kadua in Mathalik. A man-made reservoir of natural spring water, Sembuatha Lake is surrounded by sprawling tea plantations and pine forests. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night. A day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhavarana 24 7.